Good morning. It is currently just past 5 a.m. and we are headed out to a spot that's just southwest of Phoenix. Uh, about 50 minutes southwest of Phoenix for some FPV flying. And we made it out to the spot here. I brought the mini drac and I got the Aero Scout. And this should be a beautiful morning for some FPV. This place is really crazy. It has its own little air system because in Phoenix, it was pretty windy coming out here. When I got out here, it is dead calm, no wind at all. And here we are getting into the first flight of the mini drac that day, just after sunrise. This was flown on a 4S 4200 milliamp hour battery, so it's the smaller battery I fly with my mini drac. And for this footage in this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little different. I'm gonna throw up the DVR footage from today. I haven't done that in the in the past, but I figured it would be a cool little insight into what the plane and is actually flying like and what I'm seeing through my goggles. So here you can see these are the mountains that were about a mile to my south and uh, we're climbing up the mountains just cruising up kind of missing some saguaros and going up to see the top and cruise the ridge line. Right now I'm heading south and there was wind coming from the south so it was kind of coming right up over the tops of these mountains and giving me a little bit of rotor on this side of the mountains. You can see the FPV feed getting bounced around a little bit. Uh, the Hero 8 does a really really good job of stabilizing any shake in the footage. It really looks like perfectly smooth. On this flight, I noticed that in iNav, for some reason, as soon as I go above 400 feet or beyond a mile, my OSD for those just disappears. I wonder if it's a quick setting I need to fix. If anyone knows what that is and how to easily fix it, let me know in the comments. Here we are diving down off the mountain, just kind of cruising the desert now. You can see we're right at around like 11, 12 amps doing 74 miles an hour. The mini drag just it, it's uncomparable to any other plane I've flown. It's so smooth and locked in when you set power. It just really loves to stay straight and fast. Like I said, this is my first time flying with 1.3 video and I was really just blown away by how far you could go and the image quality was just perfect. Like really, there I had no interruptions at all that day that were bad. I mean, every now and then when you do a little roll or something like you just saw, it blinks for a second, but like there is no bad video. It's, it's amazing. I love 1.3, I'm sold on it. This first flight here, I was kind of just feeling out everything, so I wasn't actually doing some really cool stuff. I was just kind of more cruising around, feeling it out, seeing how far I could go, how good the image quality was, and how good the signal was, too. And you can see it's just, it's amazing. I think the farthest I went out this morning was about two miles, and it'll be coming up in the second flight of this video. So if you're looking to see some really cool stuff, go ahead and skip to the second flight of this video. buzz of the tower. I just can't believe how good the mini drag flies. It's really just one of the most stable planes I've ever flown in my life. And I believe this is my setup for the landing on this flight. And out here in the desert, sometimes you get a little bit of rough landings. This was a little bit of a rougher one, but the mini drag handles it fine. I have a 3D print on the nose that'll really just take anything you throw at it. So the GoPro and the camera were totally fine. I just dug a little dirt on that one. And here we are now for the second flight. This is when things get pretty cool. I really like this flight. 
Um, this is on a 4S 5000, so it's a little heavier, but it doesn't seem to affect it much. I didn't start recording my DVR until a couple seconds in, so you'll see it pop up on the screen here shortly. Like this is some of the smoothest footage I've ever gotten on any of my flying machines ever. Drones, planes, anything. This is might be the smoothest footage I've ever taken. And here the DVR pops up, we're in horizon mode, and I'm gonna do a quick test of return to home to make sure everything works. So here we click it into return to home, the plane is climbing by itself to 300 feet, and then it starts a turn back to me. And we are about a mile out right now, so I was just seeing how it would do and if it really is all autonomous. And that's seeming like it's going to make it back to me perfectly and start circling, so I go ahead and click it back into horizon mode and continue with this flight. And for this flight, I believe I just followed the power lines to my left out a ways and then uh, kind of veered off from them and cruised around the desert just a couple miles out. It was pretty crazy being out that far, and I, I've never done it before. I mean, it felt really free just to be able to go explore all this land with no interruptions and not worrying about my signal loss or anything. It's really, really cool. taking a turn to the north following these little rivers out here and then just kind of cruising around the desert from here out. This was about the farthest point I went out to and it was just under two miles. I think it was like 1.7 or 1.8 miles away, but it, this was like, it was just so cool to be able to go that far away with no interruptions at all. I've never experienced that before. You can see here's a little couple power lines I saw. I had to get up over those really quick. And then we're gonna set it down nice and low here and just cruise it back at around 70 miles an hour or so. I'm heading straight out to the little butte that's right in front of us out there, dead in the center of the screen. I'm approaching myself again here. I'll be off to the left. You'll see me clip a tree 
barely right here. Boom. You can see my truck right over there, and now we're headed out to that butte again, which is just over a mile from where I was. So where I turned way out there into this butte was a total of about three miles or so. And again, I'm just blown away that I have pure clean video the whole time. It's so amazing. The only thing flying out here that you gotta remember is there are power lines that run along most of the roads. Not all of them, but some of the main roads, they have power lines on them. And so you gotta kinda, when you're approaching a road, just know to climb up a little bit, maybe around 100 feet or so, you'll easily clear all the power lines. But you'll see when I come back from circling this butte, I almost forgot about the power lines on this road that you can see right there. And uh, I had to make an abrupt little climb over them. getting nice and low and you can see those power lines are coming up quick and then I catch one of them right here and I was like whoa pull up and then set it back down and then from here I basically just set set a little cruise throttle and then pitched for 50 miles an hour and started a slow climb up to, I don't know, a couple hundred feet just to go hit the tops of those mountains over there. So I'll cut to that here in a second so you don't have to just be bored about the climb. And here we are, climbed up to the mountains. And we're just going to kind of cruise the ridgeline again to see what's going on. This was probably the most fun leg of this flight. You'll see in a second after I dive off this mountain, I get real low out here in the desert, dodging through trees and cactuses. It's so much fun. And mini drag feels like a fighter jet. You just can't get this kind of like confidence and clear video with 5.8 it just doesn't work it doesn't allow for it i am very very stoked to continue flying with 1.3 and seeing how far and how much you can push it and this is a uh, 400 milliwatt 1.3 gigahertz video transmitter i'm flying with had to hit the power line gap And then basically, for the rest of the flight, I was just cruising around and kind of enjoying the last bits of this battery. I didn't fly this battery all the way down to what I could have, but I think I used about 3,800 milliamps out of it, so I had a little bit longer I could have flown.
And then now I am setting up my landing approaches. So usually I'll do one pass first to kind of line up and see what it looks like or where I want to land, where the clearest path is. And then after that, I'll commit and go to an actual landing. So here we are on the first pass, kind of looking at my, uh, my crosshair and lining up where I want to hit at. And this one I came in, I didn't kind of bleed off enough speed and I was a little fast, so I decided to pull up and go around again. The mini drag lands really fast with the, the normal wings. I'm landing at about 40 miles an hour. If you really, really hold it off, you can get it down to 35. And uh, this next landing is a pretty good example of how you should land a mini drag, at least out in these kind of areas with the train I'm landing on. Try to get it as slow as possible before you set it down. So here we've cut power, we're gliding in, and the mini drag actually glides really well if you trust it and keep on flowing it. But you keep pulling up, pulling up, slow down, slow down. You can see I touched down right at like 35 miles an hour. Smooth landing, no damage. Just landed the mini drac, flew two batteries in it, and these were the first flights on 1.3 gigahertz. And that was absolutely amazing, being able to go like two miles away with no video interruptions at all. I'm very excited to start uh, playing with 1.3 more and seeing how far I can go with the mini drag. 